Stacey, I am so excited to have you in my home today. Well, thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. Yeah, we kind of became um, Instagram friends, friends because we both follow each other's children who are, you know, living these, you know, incredibly interesting, interesting. Oh, yes. Lives. And there's, it's hard to find somebody who is in your boat. Yeah. Yeah. That yeah. understands. That is. So yeah. There's been so many times on this journey where I was just like, I wonder, you know, like, at what point did other moms start sleeping? Yes. <laughs> start worrying just a little bit less. Yes, it is. When you, have, when you have sons that come off stage and are on the road all night, which now being on a tour bus, which yeah. you know, a tour bus it was like a dream come true. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's much better yeah. than than the van yes, the with van the guys with taking the truck, turns. Oh, or the sprinter van, or the yeah. who's the most sober to drive home. <laughs> uh, yeah, it is. The tour bus was like the greatest. In fact, when they got the tour bus, I went the first weekend and followed them to Colorado. Did you really? Yes, I was like, oh, this is you know a dream um, to ha- not to be able to go home and go to sleep. You're always going to worry. Yeah, but you know we have a driver Jr., which was our first, and we love him. And you just thought, okay, there's somebody who has to be um, qualified for this job. Right, so right. They're driving our babies. <laughs> that is exactly right. That's right. So we're going to talk a lot about Parker today, and there's so many interesting stories yeah. and stuff. But at the end of the day, you are a mom to three rock star. I mean, passionate, driven mm-hmm. kids out there. I mean, there's never killing a dull it. moment with my three. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I wanted to read this because so, I saw where you wrote this on an Instagram sure. post you made. You said, "I raised my children to be strong, hardworking people. The result is me constantly needing to travel to keep up yes, with them." It is. It is, and uh, people say all the time. My New Year's resolution this year was to take a vacation that was not, you know child driven and I have yet to leave home and I've been on probably 15 planes this year and they're all to see it you know something somebody's doing so yeah. I'm not complaining but <laughs> I still have six months or five and a half to go on my vacation <laughs> well introduce us to the McCollum kids okay we have Tyler is the oldest he is the one that started our music pa- uh, the passion for music he's the one that drove the the family there and then we have Michael which is our daughter Um, She and her husband have tagged strategies in um, D.C., Alexandria. They have four children under the age of five. Amazing. Um, And they are, if they're not on a plane, they're high-fiving each other through the house and the other one's out the door. So they... um, their life is just as busy. I always say she's the real rock star in the family. Yeah, yeah. You got to pause yeah, for a second. Yeah. I mean, she was recently named to forty um, under forty, top, a forty under forty, um, in DC for um, is it the APC? Yeah. Um, yeah. So very. I mean, that's uh, forty under forty, and also had four children in four years. So that would uh, be a title <laughs> of its own, honestly. That in itself, I say, oh, she's such a rock. She is a rock star. Uh, I always tell the boys the real rock stars are. Yeah. But uh, in fact, I have the cutest picture of them when they were kids, um, when they got their first guitars, and she's standing in the middle. And I said she used to be the manager of the band. <laughs> she went on, but and then of course we have Parker, who is the one that's kind of out in front right now. I noticed you so, refer to him a lot as your sunshine baby. He is my well, they, he is my sunshine baby. It's kind of a story with them. Tyler's the moon, Michael's the stars, and then we have the sunshine baby. Oh, uh, so that. he's our sunshine baby. Baby. And when he was born, he had a really round, precious face with strawberry blonde hair. And we always said he looked like a sunshine. So <laughs> That's so is. cute. He's my sunshine baby. So tell me just a little bit about kind of Parker as a kid and, and a little bit about the musical journey itself. What he kind of personality do you have? to the world, I mean, literally. <laughs> uh, he was a twin. He was an identical twin, and the other didn't survive the pregnancy. So I always said there's two personalities Always from the day he was born. We knew there was a different, you know something different um as a child he drug this little yellow type chair around and would play guitar if somebody would come into our house he would just walk in front of him and sit down and start playing well at the time we thought it was just funny um his favorite thing to sing was um a pearl jam song um <laughs> about a car wreck and so it, it was just entertaining that's who parker was um but his brother is the one who had the musical ear and the passion for, he taught himself to play the guitar, and Parker was mesmerized by it. And um, they were about 15, so let's see, Parker would have been about eight. And it just, one summer, 
it clicked and they started playing and never looked back. I mean, it was, which you can relate, you can wash, I don't think there was a day in 10 years that I didn't wash a load of clothes and find a piece of paper with a song jotted down or words, you know, or part of a Guitar song. Guitar picks written, yes. in the dryer and the lint. Guitar picks. A and the, I'd steal, I used to throw them in this little thing above the laundry and I, can't, I have so many of them of the songs they wrote that I would find in their jeans and they oh, would never I miss them. That. And I go, I guess we didn't think that was a hit. But, um, and so Tyler ended up going to college and playing some there. Um, and kind of interesting, Tyler was playing in college when Randy Rogers was kind of doing his beginning years. Okay. And Tyler got to kind of know some of the bands coming through there. And fast forward 10 years later, Randy's the one who approached Parker to manage him. Oh, and wow. we were just like, things just come full circle. Yeah. Um, but no, so they they started this journey together. They've written together some of Parker's songs Tyler has co-written. Uh, Tyler now produces and writes, and he plays. He has Americana singer-songwriter kind of vibe going on in Texas. Yeah, and um, he's been named to appear with Parker on stage, yes, too. and then, of course, he's played. Parker broke his finger, so he filled in uh, as acoustic guitarist yeah. for a couple of weeks and really enjoyed it. So I mean, it's it got to be so special to see them know, both together on stage. Mother's dream come true mm-hmm. to have them both on the stage together, mm-hmm. absolutely. Yeah. So loved it. Connor's brother, of course, is yes. and his videographer and yeah. does all of his content and all of that. And so I love the fact that they do travel together and kind of knowing and when I think the best part about it is when my husband and I are out on the road with them we're all together so, so just having the the two boys it's kind of like the whole family's there so that's kind of a well, neat and having thing. them both go the same direction yes yeah I said y'all I can literally go one place and see two at one time which that's very rare oh yeah, yeah so for sure I, yes I it's it is it's very cool you gotta love that so when um Parker would let's say walk into the kitchen when he was young what kind of music would you have had on for them what were they influenced um, by when they were younger they will say, you hear Parker say over and over, CMT was playing on every television. I would get up every morning and turn it on. It's all that ever played. So like the music videos the on music CMT? music videos all day. And of course, I was a huge Keith Whitley, which he passed away before Parker was born. But I was a huge Keith Whitley. Of course, George Strait. But and you met George be- way before well, Parker well, ever way, did. Oh, yes. Way before. <laughs> so, uh, so that was, you know, of course, George Strait. Um, all your old country. We were very old country. Um, or Alabama was, you know, huge. I mean, that was such a big band when I was in high school in the eighties. Um, so it was all old country and my boys embraced it. My dad was a huge old, you know, Johnny Cash, Willie Nelson, George Jones, Loretta Lynn, Tammy Wynette, the old, old, you know, your the good stuff, the good stuff, your staples, (laughs) Ray Price was huge. And, um, so it just was the boys listened to it all their lives. Um, Pat Green was probably the one where they looked at each other and said, we want to do that at the Houston Livestock Show, which was kind of crazy because when Parker played there, we were we text Pat and said, OK, you know, he was 14 years old when Parker when Pat came there and Parker says, I want to do that. So he got to watch him yes, at the Houston Livestock boy. Show and then he ended up having that full and, circle opportunity yeah, of being out there. He said, that's what I want to do. They both did. And I was like. Okay, well, that was great. Now let's go home. You know, who would have ever thought that yeah. we'd be back there to play it? What uh, at that age? What could you have seen Parker doing? Like, you know, what maybe did you see for his future? We always said he was going to be the governor of Texas. <laughs> always, it's what everybody has always said about him since he was a little bitty boy. He really? just had that um, charisma about him. <laughs> in fact, several a little politician of, yeah, in him. Several, yes, my dad was a retired judge, and um, he had a good role model there. And several of his teachers in the yearbook at the end of the year had written, I can say I've taught the governor of Texas, and these ladies didn't know each other. Oh, wow. And I'm like, okay, there's something about him they see, so it was kind of a joke. Yeah. But um, he got into acting as a kind of a fluke one year in fourth grade. Um, guy saw him and wanted, we weren't there to audition. His sister was. And the guy walked out and said, I want to audition him. I'm like, oh, we're, no, no. It's not what we're here for. Yeah. And he goes, no, I want. And they took him back and he got the lead role in Miracle on 34th Street. Oh. At the Crichton in Conroe, Texas. It ran for like six weeks. Um, and I was like, oh, he's really good at this. Well, then he got a lead in a play at school. And I'm like, okay. And so there was something there, you know, mm-hmm. but still he mm-hmm. he loved sports, loved it. So yeah. football, baseball, basketball typical boy 
he loved cowboying, being out at the ranch. We still hadn't really entertained being an entertainer. Right, right. But it was in him. It was just yeah. in him. He's and he kind of had that classic Texas yes. upbringing. It sounds like lots of family around. Yes. Um, your father, who was a huge influence in Parker's life, mm-hmm. um, had the cattle and the ranch. Mm-hmm. And um, his love of music also influenced Parker. Oh, yes, yes. Very much so. It's that when you were in my dad's truck, he, he controlled the radio stage. <laughs> and it wasn't a radio. It wasn't a radio. It was always, you know, his music. Mm-hmm. And so that's what the boys listened to. And they would leave the day school was out, spend the entire summer at the ranch. Oh, wow. Um, hopefully they would get back to start the first day. Sometimes we didn't make it <laughs> the second day. But um, so, yeah, that was a big part of it. Very and much. I saw a picture where Parker had um, actually signed his record deal using his His, grandfather's desk desk, that was so special it was so he came back to texas to do that Mm -hmm. as opposed to a typical music row signing he did do there an official one there but he that was his um we gathered the whole family and he wanted it to be done there Mm -hmm. he wanted him to be a part of it that's so special Um, is he on an album cover he is on the palomina horse which is hollywood return which is what hollywood gold is named after oh so the album so it okay. was a cutting horse my dad had so okay. um, gotcha. yeah but that's him yes when he was in his 20s that is so special mm-hmm. and that, that. Fi- the video of um that song is all of my dad okay okay yeah that's really special that tribute that relationship yeah when when they tossed that song to him he called me one day and he goes mom listen to this song and he goes i want to do it it's chris stapleton's song mm-hmm. and um it just this reminds me so much of Bob. Um, and I'm like, that was what it's called to my dad. And I said, okay, that sounds great. And it tur- when it was done, we were just, you know, not a dry eye anywhere. The tribute to him and how he did it was yeah. very, very sweet. So Parker tried college for a little bit, right? A very short while? Um, we think maybe three days. <laughs> <laughs> three days, okay. He so didn't we- want to go. And he went to, to appease his dad and I. Yeah. Um, and I think it may have last. I think he probably went a week or two, but maybe only three <laughs> classes. But, um, and you know, he first started out, I mean, you've, you've, y'all have done this. I mean, he literally, this is one of my favorite Parker stories. He was got a residency at Pooty's Roadhouse, which is Willie's Road Manager's bar out by Lake Travis. And um, he would play every Monday night. Well, he said, Mom, nobody comes. There's this one lady. One, he just hated it. <laughs> I just kept going. It's practice. Just keep doing it. So a girlfriend flew in from Louisiana said, come on, we're going to Austin. We're going to surprise him. So we drive there, and we get there, and she's not feeling well. And I go, just make it through this, and you can go home. And we get there, and we're walking, and we're sitting there, and we kept waiting, waiting. So finally she gets up and goes and asks the guy at the bar, when does Parker McCollum go on? And he goes, oh, he's not coming. He doesn't feel good. <laughs> I said, so I officially even went to a show that he didn't show up <laughs> Uh, and I've been to some where there weren't many people, but I actually went to the Parker McCollum show that he did. That he was the no show. <laughs> of course. I text him. I go, where are you at? He goes, I'm at home. I'll go, you've got to get me. <laughs> backfired so, on you just uh, a little bit. So I drove four hours to surprise him to find out he was. And I couldn't tell him I was coming because it was a surprise. Yeah. Or I would have known he was at home, but. So you guys end up supporting him. And, you know, if you want to go give this a try, not really yes. having any idea that it would get to where it we, is. If but, he wanted to do it, he had to do it on his own. Um, his dad had told him, okay, I'll pay for four years, college or this, you know, you know, your rent and everything, but this is it. Yeah. And Randy Rogers approached him right before the four years were up. And, um, and it was going, you know, he was starting to fill the places in Texas. The places he was playing were starting, you know, get a word a was crowd. getting out. Word yeah. Was getting out. Um, he took a loan out for his first little EP, um, and my dad helped him co-sign for that, you know, and get that. And he had to pay it back. And he paid it back, you know, fairly quick. You know, he merged and stuff were selling. CDs were selling. It was working. Um, but we just, um, I think his dad will agree on this. We weren't going to throw money at it. Mm-hmm. We weren't going to. But the hardest part about that, and you know, was allowing them to live and drive. Or, you know, That's what was up all night. They have to learn the hard way. Yes. You're going to do this. You've got to do this. Yes. Um, you just, yeah. I mean, just, I think two nights ago, um, Connor was driving somewhere after a show that was going to be a few hours. And, you know, even now his dad was like, I'll get a hotel room. Yes. I'll pay for, you know, yes. those things where you'll jump in to help them make what you what feel like is a smart decision. Yes, to yeah. make the better decisions. It yeah. is such a hard thing. But mm-hmm. uh, so I will say he was a starving artist at one point. Now, I moved to Fort Worth and they stayed with me a lot. 
they would even play in Oklahoma and drive back, the whole band, yeah. which, of course, I loved. But it was, and they played a lot of North Texas. That's kind of, that's the first place that put him on the radio, mm-hmm. the ranch in Fort Worth. And so he had a good following there. So that was, that helped. My parents are down by Houston. His dad was in Austin. So we had bases for them. Right, right. But it was still, I do not miss those nights <laughs> of going to bed and knowing that white van with that trailer behind it had five hours to... um get home yeah yeah it was hard. So, so he did that for I mean five or six years building this mm-hmm. massive Texas fan base mm-hmm. which really was part is part of his success story of mm-hmm. leading to the record deal and basically having a every major label in town mm-hmm. wanting to sign Parker um because he did live that life of going mm-hmm. to play all the different places yes. in Texas I mean that had to be a little bit the, some years were, that were nerve wracking for you. Oh, they were. I think they were hard on everyone. I told people if that you can name any bar in Texas, I have been there. And before we did this, I had not been in any of them. But you did. Well, I went to every show I could physically get to. I mean, there was nothing to go to three or four shows in a week. Um, but it was. Um, it just kind of went by, Jimmy. Mm-hmm. You, we we kept having, which you've seen this in the industry. You'd have little things like you know, Randy Rod beat on the ranch and then Randy Rogers, you know, embracing the situation. There were uh and Randy told him, I can take you as far as this and mm-hmm. I know, you know, I can I can help you with this. Right. Every time you would kind of feel like, How much more can we do this? We're so yeah. tired. Something would happen that it was just like a dream almost of everything falling into almost place. Almost like validation yes. that you are on the journey you're yes. supposed to be on. Yes. Yeah. You, something the would next tell door you, okay, would this open. is working. This is working. Yeah. Um, At what point would you okay. say that you, you know, we started talking about lack of sleep, but what point did you start sleeping better? Um, the tour bus. The tour bus. The that tour made bus. all the world difference. It was like a game changer. Absolute mm-hmm. game changer. One night they left... Um, a place up in North Texas and they started driving home and I get, you know, the, um, what do you, my app out on my phone. Oh, just see what location the storm coming through. Mm-hmm. And I mean, it's, yeah, it was the storms up there are crazy. And I'm on the phone with Jake Murphy at the time was, um, handling his merch and his road manager. He was everything. And I will always be one of my kids. And he's, I'm talking to him the whole way to Austin going, okay, they're right ahead of it. If they can just keep going, they'll stay. And, for four hours, I was mm-hmm. a nervous wreck. I wanted, they're in a tr- van with a trailer out in the middle of the nowhere, and this storm is fixing to just sweep across there. Wow. And I will never forget just thinking, this is killing this mother. <laughs> yeah, oh, I'm sure. I'm sure. Um, it is. Do you still, like th- this point into touring, do you still know where he is every night, like touring? Yes. Do you know, I, I, I don't like small planes, and he's on a lot of those now. So I have a mind over matter. I'll talk to him tomorrow about how I got there. Um, I have sometimes I have these bad vibes, and I'm like, "Oh my gosh, don't get on it." Um, and he he's funny about it. He's like, "Mom, it's it's all okay." I go, "That's because you're young. Everything seems okay." Yeah. But yeah, every night I'm always on where they are, looking where they're at. Mm-hmm. You know, um, don't get to go as much as I used to. You go quite a bit, uh, though. I do go quite a bit. I try to do several shows a month, um, but. Um, I always tell him my dream would be to get my own tour bus and just go. <laughs> I would probably get tired someday, but I would love you to do You can do the it. RV thing yeah. like uh, my okay, husband I and I do. Yeah. I oh, yeah. Yeah. We, well, he had, I've toyed with him and call, call him. I go, what would it cost me to get a tour bus just for a month? I'm sure in a month I'd want to go home. But get a couple of girls and we'll just hit the road and follow you. I think it would be so much fun. Can you do it on this tour so I can go with can you? you? That sounds like a whole fun? lot of fun. Yeah. I think it would be a blast. Yeah. <laughs> I said, you know, I'm sure in a month I would be ready to come home. Yeah, but, yeah, for sure. Um, I think it would be fun. That would um, be so my fun. My dad used to always say, just sell your house and follow them around. Yeah. And I thought, <laughs> I've thought about it. What, um, what would you say has been your proudest moment on this journey of watching him? <sighs> Outside of him marrying Hallie Ray. Which I told him, you had, that's the biggest and best investment you will ever make in your life is picking that right person. Yeah. Um, the Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo was um, no words. I think he's, he goes, sometimes I just sit and go, wow, I played that. That was huge. 73,000 people um, in something we were I mean, I was born and raised in it. He was born and raised in it. It's generational in our family. That's special. Did to, your dad uh, get to see that? No, my dad passed away five years ago. And that was like so bittersweet for all of us. Um, because 
he passed away right as everything catapulted right into as the it was ma- getting yeah. going. Yeah, he and, and he was such an instrumental part of it happening. Mm-hmm. Um, but I have to know he's as Parker said when he played the Grand Ole Opry, he is up there tonight telling everybody his grandson's <laughs> Grand about Ole his Opry. Grandson. He, saw, he tells about that when he played that night he played there. Aww. But um, the Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo, I still have to sign. I said, y'all, maybe we're gonna play it again, and then maybe I'll go. Okay, we really did this. Yeah, because yeah. that was such an incredible. And I laugh because I said there was a traffic jam going back to Conroe that night because Conroe, Texas, came out. The whole town came they out for did. it. It's I the most love wonderful that. place, and they support him. Him. It's amazing. Well, one morning. of the things I've noticed is that um, when he comes out and I think he does a song and then he introduces himself, he always says, my name is Parker McCollum and I'm from Conroe, Conroe Texas. Texas. He's so yes, proud of he it. He is. He is. And do you know when it back years ago when he was first starting, he would say he was from Austin and I'd be like, no, you're not. <laughs> but it was hip at the time. Oh, and now yeah. that he's where he is, he's found, you know, he's kind of settled in. He goes, I am from Conroe, Texas. And yeah. it is. Uh, the town is just, they, um, October 2nd is Parker McCollum Day. Oh, my goodness. They gave to the city. And recently, a gentleman there that owns Joe's Restaurant painted the entire side of the building with Parker walking on the stage. It's the whole kind of played out the Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo down the building. It's a mural. Oh, that's and amazing. it starts out as he and Tyler because he said, you know, the story started with them and they're playing at Billy Bob's and then it goes to the Houston Livestock Show. So, yeah, I taught him you're a small town hero. You're a small town celebrity. <laughs> I love it. So you have mentioned that um, you call Hallie Ray the perfect girl for Parker. Yes. And, you know, people are just people love a good love story in country music. And there's this really fun to follow. And they've been married four months, four months. So yeah. not very long. No. You and Hallie have a super sweet relationship. She is. Um, I tell everybody if I could have ordered her in the mail I couldn't have done better uh, <laughs> she is she is absolutely the most beautiful tomboy in the whole world um, so she can hang with the guys really well um, she's got the most beautiful family uh, she gets Parker um, there's there are a lot alike um, and yeah you can in fact the song that I was telling you I wrote the song for their wedding for us to dance to um, the chorus is you found the one and it is, I said, you know, could not have found a more perfect girl. I so. love that. That's so sweet. She just makes me tear. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> she is. I think that's just like the hugest thing when your kids find. My daughter is married to the best dad in the world. I love him. I always say he's the best dad. Uh, she, he's married to a pre- She's married to a precious guy out of Alabama. His family's from Alabama. So we've got Alabama. Now we've got our, uh, Oklahoma. And then my oldest is getting ready to take that walk with a young lady uh, too so I said you know we do I'm very blessed but Hallie Ray is absolutely every she's the perfect daughter-in-law uh, and, and even we I guess she's been in our life three years now and we just knew it from the beginning oh you did yeah, there was just something different about yeah. this relationship well, he did he did <laughs> he called me the minute he met her and go I found the one she's not really impressed with Parker he talking about herself in a third party but I have found the one which is probably a good thing well I knew she's then not. I knew then this was it yeah because he was gonna have to go work for it so yeah, yeah. oh I love that and what a blessing in that stage of knowing that your children have found the one and I would imagine there's a lot of comfort in that no it is and you know pl- we're planning the wedding um people would l- ask me is it really going as well I said, oh, it's like the most flawless thing I've ever had to do in my life you she could not have been easier more fun there was never a single second where everybody wasn't having a blast and no, no bridezilla no, nothing <laughs> I mean nothing I kept just thinking okay this is too good to be true absolutely the from the moment they were engaged the night they got engaged I said there's never been more love in a room Aww. it was just the neatest night um and they got engaged here in Nashville with all of us here it was a surprise for her um, and the way that he did it was just really neat to have us all right there waiting on it to the big moment because we got to all see it. Yeah. But she didn't know we were there. We were up in the loft. Oh, my goodness. That sounds ideal. So um, and then it just was it was really um, she's she's easy. She really is. Well, the wedding was beautiful. It was. You looked stunning. Thank that red you. dress was amazing. That red dress was a second choice because the first one we had a uh oh, but it all worked. Uh oh, I had a little <laughs> fashion faux pas, <laughs> but I had a backup dress and it worked. So. Oh, it was so pretty. And um, so you have to tell the story of what you pulled off the most incredible special surprise for Parker. And- I wrote, I had I wrote um, Amy Barnett, which is a very dear friend of mine. 
uh, is a actual songwriter, accredited songwriter. And um, her and I started working on it, gosh, the moment they were engaged. Oh, wow. A song. It came from a letter you had written well, to Parker, I read, though. I wonder why a letter. I couldn't do it without crying. I couldn't do anything without crying. <laughs> I still can't do it. And um, so I, we were going to write a song, and... I kept having this writer's block, we, but we would sit down and Amy would listen to me and we would write down the things I said. And it was more like a letter and then it came together and then one night she calls me, she goes, okay, listen to this. And she was playing her guitar and it just flowed. And I said, okay, we're, we're there, you got it. And um, then we worked with, um, because I wanted it to be a secret, I had to be careful in Texas that nobody knew I was working on it. All right. You couldn't even go to your son who would have <laughs> no, been your go-to no, because he can Tyler, do all who that. would have been the person to do it with. Yeah. Uh, we went to Rosewood Studios out in Tyler and we did it from the ground up. And um, then we had um, um, Heather Little who has written um, Charlie's Talking and um, Gunpowder and Lead from Miranda Lambert. Mm-hmm. Um, she, I had heard her voice on a song and just was wow who was singing the song and they said well she does the demos and she was had sang a song for my friend amy and i said that's who i want on my song and we contacted her and she lived close to the studio and she came over in um 15 minutes okay is that all y'all need and i'm like okay really that's all it took but she has a voice that just it has this soulful pain in it it's just beautiful I Tell me about it. the actual surprise um, when you, well, so this was for the mother son dance at the wedding, was for the mother son dance. Okay. And I just, Hallie called me and said, okay, I need your song. And I go, okay, just understand that it will be there. And I'm going to, but I don't want anybody to know what it is. And I said, it's a surprise. And so then it came down to it and the wedding planner called and goes, we, I said, let me talk to the person. So they had the engineer call me and, um, as he was the first person to hear it out of the circle. And he messaged me back and said, wow. And that guy that day kind of made me, okay, I feel a little more confident. Um, And then, of course, I was telling you when it played, it seemed like it went on forever. I was so nervous. (laughs) And Parker didn't have much to say. And right at the end, he goes, you did good, Mom. And I was like, okay, thanks. I love that. That's so sweet. So what point in this journey, I mean, three or four shows a month, you went to so many of the small shows where there were hardly anyone there. Um, And then you went to every show on the Miranda Lambert tour, which I love that you did that. You just followed, well, you didn't follow the bus, you flew while they took the bus. I flew from city to city. (laughs) Um, But at what point would you say that you stood there and you just kind of looked and said, wow, he's really done this. Was that also the rodeo or was there a moment before that? Was it when Pretty Heart went number one? Wow. There have been so many times where you, you know, it's, you're like, okay, this is wow. And then there's another wow. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. Absolutely. The Houston Livestock Show, when you have 73,000 people in a building, it's, it's surreal. In fact, I wish so bad I could have gone back the next day and done it again because you didn't couldn't even take it in. Mm-hmm. There were so many aspects to take in. Yeah. Uh, pretty hard going. Yeah, you know, went gold and went platinum. It was um, that, but you're not as. Um, that's more of a phone call. Mm-hmm. This one, you know, where that mm-hmm. you were experiencing and it. you're watching that process too yes. of you know how many ads did it get this week or where is yes. it on the chart yes. and so you kind of can see that coming yes. once you learn a little bit about how it works yes as opposed to and you, and experiencing you, yes. a and moment that's more of um as i said it's more of a you, you know you kind of see it and it happens a phone call but the houston livestock show on radio was um as i said he says himself i just some days go wow i played that yeah um, and so I think when we go back and do it again, you kind of know how to do it and how to take it in better. You were so overwhelmed. Mm-hmm. Um, and I didn't know where I wanted to be in the Reliant Dome, where, where I could be, where I wanted to see it from. Um, so now you kind of know how to go back and take it in the best way. Yeah. So we mentioned that there's three children. And so obviously all off Tyler and Parker's careers are somewhat similar and mm-hmm. um, their personalities are different. And then of course there's Michael off doing her incredible thing. But how would you say in the basics of parenting that you kind of approached parenting differently for each of them? Um, Tyler, the first child, I always say, I'm sorry for everything. <laughs> He was your experimental one. I, am, yeah, I always told him, you're my guinea pig. I tell him that, and that's <laughs> awful, but I'm very honest about it. I said, I was learning with you, and you were going to be the perfect child. Um, and you were. Um, but my that's who you make all your mistakes on. That's mm-hmm. who you stress over. That's who you over-parent. My daughter, 
I come, my mom's a very strong personality. I'm a very strong personality. And I, true, I way before all of the movement, I just thought, you know, as a woman, you need to have your own career, your own. I wanted her to do something. But she knew what she wanted to do. And when she left uh, Ole Miss and she went straight to D.C. and just never looked back. Very strong personality, very independent. Mm-hmm. Um, and I instilled that in her. And then Parker, I was more that, uh, you have the baby. You nurture them more. You know this is it. You know, you're mm-hmm. kind of like, okay, I'm milking this for every second. Everybody said I'm, he did kindergarten twice because he was younger and a younger birthday. And my girlfriends would kid me and go, she just didn't want him to go to you school. You just want another year of childhood with him. <laughs> um, I milked every moment I could get with him. But he and I had more of um, and he still is my child that, <laughs> well, mom's tired or he will call and ask me, how are you doing or whatever. You know what I mean? He and I have a different person. You're, you're very like, in yeah. tune with each other. Very it sounds tune, like. Very in tune. He's more your conversationalist. He will talk to you. Mm. He and I are talk. We've, we've talked on the phone for two hours. Every time I screenshot it. So when he says we did and I go, yeah, two hours and 24 minutes. <laughs> um, he will. We'll sit and talk. Um, he said, old, all my kids are old souls. It's weird, but they are all very old souls. Yeah. Um, and but he is my um, probably my one that I can sit and talk to. But I think by the third child, you're more understanding. You know where to give and what. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, even though I was the mom, which he wrote a song about me. I wrote a song said my mom's gone crazy um, <laughs> because I was so determined he was going to college. You can do this, but you need to go to college. So that, that was, was hard for you. It was he... very important to me. It mm-hmm. was just, the other two had just graduated from college. They were done. And I was like, okay, I want a home run here. I want everybody to get a college degree. It's scary when you have an 18-year-old, 19-year-old child that wants to take a chance on something like yeah. that. You want, you want them to have a little backup. You want them, I said, work on your degree to, you know, mm-hmm. nothing else. You can always go back and finish. Mm-hmm. Have a plan B. I can remember being in a meeting with um, Connor talking to music executive, and I think he was probably 16 years old. And um, the guy looked looked at him in this meeting, and he said, so, Connor, what's your plan B? And he just looked right back at him, and he said, I don't have one. I'm going to make this work. And, you know, but without that drive and determination, I don't know mm-hmm. that he would be able to, you know, there's a long mm-hmm. way to go here, but in the process of making it work. And so I was a little taken aback of, oh, we probably need a plan B. But then I was like, you know what? If you don't go 100% for this goal in the stream. As a parent, it is. It is. It's in your mind. And being where I was in life, I'm like, life doesn't always go the way you plan. You know, it doesn't. So you need a plan B. You were all about the backup plan. (laughs) I was all about the backup plan. I'm like, you need a plan B, C. (laughs) Maybe D and E. Yeah. So, um, he was determined, absolutely determined somehow he was going to do this. Um, and there were times where I worried when it wasn't going well in the beginning that, you know, I, his, his, what it was doing to him. Because you're scared for them. You don't want them to get feel jaded or feel, you know, like they failed or something. And I wanted, you want your kids to succeed. Mm-hmm. And you're scared to put them in something. I mean, it's you, and you should teach them to fail because you learn from failing. But it's hard as a parent to watch it. Right. Um, so it was um, nerve wracking in the beginning. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure. What about all the fun stuff you've gotten to do? What's been just kind of fun for Stacy to do? Is it dressing up an awards show, being by his side? They've been exciting. Yeah, they have been. I will say the CMTs were my favorite so far. Um, very exciting, and of course the people you meet. I mean, mm-hmm. this to me, I think you. Once you've done it and you've seen all of this, you meeting the songwriters. Oh, meeting absolutely. The people who wrote the songs. Yes. Not discounting the artists at all. They're phenomenal. Mm-hmm. Um, one of the hardest jobs out there, I think. But the songwriters, meeting mm-hmm. them and getting to know them. The songwriters to me are um, getting to meet them all. Yeah. Getting to learn I about them. I love that yeah. the songwriters are who you get a little yeah. bit starstruck by yeah. because they are. Yeah. You know, the bread and butter of this town. No, they are the heartbeat of me. country music. Yeah. They are yeah. very much to me. Um, I love that. I love meeting them. I love getting to talk to them. Mm-hmm. I love hearing how they, you know, where they come from and what their story is. Because then when you go back and listen to their music, so a lot of times you pick up on parts of it. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, it That to me is probably one of my favorite parts of the industry. So, so what's the most fun now? Now that he... Now the fun part is I can just go whenever I want. <laughs> 
<laughs> hop in. And, and the, you can and say, that's Hallie Ray's problem. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> she can deal with that. That She gets that part. But um, I think the fun part now is seeing it work out for him. Watching your kids' dreams come true, no I don't care how small they are, is the uh, it's the ultimate and maybe I I have lived a lot my kids they're my world and I know I probably have lived probably way too much of my life for them but to me it's my dreams too Mm -hmm. you know so these coming they're mine uh because this is what I wanted uh it may not be for me but it was the dreams I wanted to see their dreams come true and I think watching them these things happen for them um it's the best part. Absolutely the best part. Every time I get a phone call, mom, because Parker always says, mom, <laughs> the way he says it. And you know something good's coming. You know, you know something um, you're not going to believe or what. So it is. It's, um, I just want to sit back and retire and enjoy it. 